What's happening everyone? Thank you for clicking on this video and I hope that you find it helpful. What if you got the chance to test ride six different 20 by four e-bikes, 20 by four fat tire e-bikes, all from different manufacturers and different brands and decide you know, which one you like the best, which one fit you the best and catered to your needs as an e-biker. What if you got that chance to test ride all these bikes? Well, my dad, Papa Citizen, got that chance today. He got to get out and ride all of these 20 by four fat tire bikes. And he is gonna tell us his thoughts on these bikes in hopes that maybe it'll help you to decide if one of these might be right for what you're looking for. There are all kinds of different brands. We got Cyrusher, G-Force, Aerial Rider, Fabulous Amp Rides, Hemiway. There's a whole bunch of fat tire bikes here. And I'm gonna let him explain in his own words what it's like or what it was like for him to ride each of these and Maybe you'll get some useful information out of it. So I hope you enjoy. And then at the end, maybe, just maybe, maybe, we'll see. Depends what he picks. I might just let him take his favorite one home with him back to Pennsylvania, 10 hours away. We'll see. Let's go. All right, well, let's get things started. We will start with bike number one, which is the uh, Cyrusher Komoda bike. Pull it out here in the light so you can see it. It's a dual suspension bike. 14 amp hour battery pack, 750 watt motor, hydraulic brakes. I think it goes for around 2200 or so. What did you think of this one? What did you notice about this one? Well, first of all, you know, I think you, you've got to take a look at why, you were, why you're buying a bike. You know, whether you're going to buy it for just joy riding or whether you're going to buy it to commute back and forth to work or whatever, or whether you're going to use it for running errands. Those are the kind of the three things that I look at. And I always want to look at how much power the bike has, how fast it goes, whether it's a comfortable bike to ride, and whether I feel stable on it. You know, okay, does it, do I really have to hang on to this bike or, it, or is it easy to ride? And I really like this Cyrusher Komoda. It has good power, good speed, easy to get on and off, uh, very comfortable to ride, plenty of cargo capabilities to it. Uh, and the other thing that I always look at is the appearance of this bike. Does it, is it yeah. an eye-catching bike? And this one is. Yeah, this is sharp. It matches up with my other Cyrusher I have at home, which I get comments about that all the time. So I do like this bike very much. Yeah, I thought this would be one you liked a lot too. I, I really like this Komoda bike. Yep. It's just so comfy to ride for me. And that rear rack is huge. You could fit a lot of cargo on here. It's wider than most racks. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, next on the list, we got the ZM bike. This is from G-Force. Just got this one not long ago. And it's, again, 750 watt rear hub motor in there. Big battery pack, 20 amp hour battery pack right here. It looks kind of like a fake gas tank. Again, 20 by four fat tire bike, full suspension. There is a rear shock hiding in here behind this big metal plate. Kind of a heavy bike, but I don't know. What are your thoughts on this one? Well, I rode this one several times because I, I kind of I, I gave it several different opportunities to kind of get the feel of it. And, you know, the more I rode it, the more I like the bike. It, uh, it's, it's got good power, good speed. It's, it's pretty comfortable to ride. Um, it does not have cargo capabilities to it. I mean, there's no racks and no, and no baskets on it, which is doesn't necessarily work for what I use a bike for. It's got a great headlight on it. We tried that at night. Um, I think this bike would be, I think a young boy would just love to ride this thing around town. I think that, I think it just, it's got the appearance of a, you know, kind of like a motorcycle and it looks sharp and I, I, I it's eye catching. Um, not necessarily a bike for me to do my errands back and forth and, and what I use an e-bike for. But for a, a young person, I think they would really like this bike. Yeah, it doesn't have a, you keep bringing up running errands. You don't really have any spot to carry anything on this one. It's got, this is a really good lighting package on this bike though. I like the taillight and the headlight, but there is no rear rack. There's no mounting spot for that really. There's no front rack. Plus you got the double crown fork so they would get in the way of any front basket but it kind of grows on you after you ride it a fair amount it's got okay power what'd it go like 20 
eight, twenty nine, yeah, somewhere in there. It, it got up there pretty quick like that. It, it, um, the top end, it, it didn't accelerate quite as quickly as some of the other ones, but top end, it was catching up. So it, it's got decent speed to it, overall speed. All right. Next, we're going to do one that's been in the garage for a while now. The Aerial Rider X-Class 52 volt. This is a sharp looking bike. So this one, 52 volt system instead of 48, and it's got a thousand watt rear hub motor peaks at 2000 watts. This is a very powerful bike. Again, full suspension bike, front and rear suspension. Battery pack, I think is 18 amp hour. Short seat on it, but they do make a longer seat for it. I think that's all I know about this one. What do you, what do you think of this one? Well, this bike, this bike satisfied just about everything that I look for uh, in the bike. It is definitely fast. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the faster bikes that I have ridden. Uh, gets right after it. It, it does you know, have the availability of, of carrying some cargo. It's pretty comfortable on this bike. Um, there is no seat adjustment to it, so that. The height is what it is. Um, I, I was pretty pleased with this. I, I felt comfortable on this bike. I, I felt that it could you know, go over some rough terrain and, and I, I didn't feel like I was losing control on it. Uh, but it, it's overall, the biggest thing it has for it is the speed. Yeah. I mean, this thing gets right after it. It's probably, uh, probably one of the fastest, or probably the fastest bike I rode as far as the 20 inch goes. It's pretty quick and we did change this too we put a three inch stem riser on here to lift those up because these sit really low and these handlebars are kind of narrow they're not really wide but uh yeah it is it's a quick one it's a quick bike all right moving on we're blazing through these here next is uh dual motor this is the only dual motor bike in the bunch the fabulous emx extreme they make this in several different versions. There's uh, this one here, which is dual 500 watt motors. There's a 500 watt geared hub motor in each wheel. And this is a 48 volt battery pack, 28 amp hour, I believe. And this bike, believe it or not, comes also in the version that has dual 750 motors and a 60 volt battery. So it's a performer for sure. Uh, what else about this? No dual suspension. You do have a suspension seat post that comes with the bike. It does come with rack and fenders, adjustable handlebars. You just, these are really slick. You just grab this lever and it adjusts up and down. But I like the build quality on Fabulous. This has been a great bike. I've enjoyed it. What do you think of this one? Well, this is, this is another one of my favorites. I mean, this is a, this is a great performing bike. I, I think one of the, the features that it gives you that it, it, when you hit the when you have both motors turned on and you hit the front throttle, you're spinning the front tire, um, which is kind of, it's, it's eye catching for people. It really digs in and goes. And when you're going down the, down the road in just the rear motor and you kick in that front motor, when you're in you know, pedal assist five, it takes off. I mean, it, it gets up to 28, 30 mile an hour really quick. Um, good hill climbing power. Sharp looking bike, does have the cargo for me. Um, very stable, handlebars are pretty wide on it. I feel good riding and I, don't, I feel like I can let go with one hand and still control this bike. Um, nice bike, nice yeah. bike. This, like is, this bike. is one that Mrs. Citizen really liked the look of. When this came in, she said, that's one of the best looking bikes you ever got right there. I, it is sharp, but the Ferrari Red, it, it's, it's eye catching. The bright colors, like the Komoda and this one there. I don't I like know. The, it, I like the front rims with the... Yeah, the punch outs. Punch outs coming through. That's something different, you know. Yeah, that is a cool look. And they match red like that. It's really... And this thing's filthy. It would look even better if we cleaned it. All right. On to this guy, which has also been in the garage for a minute. Hemiway Escape. Let me see if I can... Get this up into the light a little bit for everybody to see. Hemiway Escape Bike. So dual suspension. It's got two big shocks here in the back. Very comfy. 750 watt rear hub motor. 
This is an earlier version. I think they've changed maybe the frame design. I know the new ones say like Hemiway right across here. This is kind of, honestly, this is like their prototype bike that they sent me probably two years ago. Front and rear baskets, um, I think has a 25 amp controller maybe, 14 amp hour battery pack, not a very big battery pack. And what else on this one? Twist throttle, typical Hemiway display, very programmable though. What do you think of this one? Well, you've had this one for a couple of years and I've liked it every time I've rode it and you've never let me have it. Uh, <laughs> I like it too. And I rode it again this weekend and I still like this bike. It is very comfortable to ride. It's got good power. I mean, it's not the fastest one you got or the most powerful one you got. But when you get on it, you feel really stable on it. You can drive it really easy on the streets. You got excellent cargo carrying, which this weekend, that's what I did. I went to the store two, three times on this bike to bring back the half gallon of milk or a loaf of bread. And this is the bike you use for that. And step through design so us old people don't have to kick our leg over it. Um, I like this bike. Yeah. I still like this bike. Yeah, it is extremely convenient. I've been keeping this uh, this cooler here. I bought this little tiny cooler that goes perfectly in this front basket. I found this on like Amazon or something. It's right in there. You can go store and grab something. And then this, this was my tank bag off my motorcycle, but it just happened to fit this rack perfectly. I'm not sure if they make a bigger rear rack for this or not, but it is a good little grocery getter kind of bike. I mean, it is... You can't adjust the seat height, but it, but it's comfortable. I mean, it's it, I, I, it's a I like it, and, and maybe why it feels so stable is because it is a very heavy bike. Yeah, ninety two pounds. Um, so you wouldn't want to be loading it on and off car carriers all the time or in the back of your truck. But um, yeah, this is one you I have. Really like this. That you just park in your garage and jump on it and ride it like a little scooter kind of deal. I think. But yeah, it's been a good bike. It's hung around if it hangs around this long you know i kind of like it all right all right here's the last one we got this is a, a visitor this is bike is just visiting for a week or so amp rides gave me a chance to check this one out the razorback razorback from amp rides and this is kind of the oddball out of this bunch let's bring it up into the light a little bit because this is the only mid-drive motor 20 inch wheel bike that we've got. So right here hiding is a 1000 watt mid-drive Bafang Ultra Max motor in there, 160 newton meters of torque. And a uh, very, very powerful bike. It's probably got torque wise, like double the power of anything else. Crazy amount of battery capacity on this bike. Inside the frame in here is a 14 amp hour battery pack and right here is a 21. So 35 amp hours of battery pack on this bike. And from what I've experienced in the past, the mid-drives have been more, I don't know, call it fuel efficient. They're, they're efficient, they use the battery well, so you probably have an insane range on this. I did not test the range. I think AMP is planning on doing that in the near future, so follow their channel for that so you can see how far this thing actually goes. It's supposed to be the fastest folding e-bike in the USA, and I think I got it to 37-ish miles per hour. It gets up and moves. What else? You don't have full suspension. You have a suspension seat post. You do have a color display on this bike and it comes in various packages, right? This is, I think, kind of the base model, but it comes in an elite package, which gives you different handlebars and grips and a few other extra added items. But this one is, uh, yeah, it doesn't fit with the rest of the crowd. What do you think on this one? Well, I didn't ride this one as much as I did the other ones. I, I'm, I have to admit, I'm, I don't know if I want to say I'm not a big fan or if I just don't quite understand the mid-drive as well as I do the other ones. I mean, usually I just put the e-bike in one gear and change my speeds and things with the, with the pedal assist and the throttle. So I'm not real um, comfortable yet shifting this. Um, it, from what I did see on this bike, it definitely does have a lot of power and it is capable of a lot of speed. Uh, it does fold um, with the handlebars going down and, and breaking here, sandwiching here together. Um, the 
high rise stem on the handlebars is not quite as stable as the BMX type or the shorter, the shorter neck things. It is more stable than the electric XP I have at home. That one, I don't feel comfortable letting go of one side of the handlebars when I'm driving it. This one, I was comfortable doing that, but uh, it is a little different design than what the other ones were. Um, not sure how heavy this, this one very, is. Very, very heavy. 95 pounds. Okay, so this, this would be a challenge to, to load in the back of your car or the back of your truck, even fold it up. I mean, they, they get kind of cumbersome to, to handle. Um, they do go into a smaller space, but you do have to deal with the weight and, and getting it there. So, uh, again, this, this is, a, I think, a good bike for the, for the right person. Um, I've just, all the bikes I've ridden before have not been mid-drive, so I'm not really accustomed to that yet, um, and I would have to get used to it. Yep, it's, it's different. It's something different. You kind of have to ride it like you'd ride a regular bike, upshifting and downshifting as you're approaching hills and coming to a stop and uh, trying to do top speed because you know your motor right here is driving the front chain ring back to these gears. You know, all the other bikes, the hub drives, it's just pushing the wheel and that's it. So it does require, I guess, a touch more thought as you're riding it. So not every e-biker is a fan of the mid drives. All right, you heard from Papa Citizen his thoughts on all of these bikes. And now, <laughs> the million dollar question. If you wanted to take one home, which one would it be? Well, as I said at the beginning, you know, I look for power, speed, appearance, comfort, um, stability on these bikes. and most of these bikes give you that i mean they're, they're all pretty good power pretty good speed some of them don't have the cargo capabilities that that i would like um if i had my choice of taking one of these bikes home i probably would take the Cy rusher komoda wow okay i, I shocking probably, i did not expect that at all i think the reason is to me, that is the sharpest looking bike here. And that's, you know, it goes, I have the Cy Rusher 900 at home, which is a very eye catching bike. I get more comments about that bike than anything. Um, doesn't, you know, it doesn't have all the power and speed of the other ones, but it does give me an overall good feel about it. Okay, wow, curveball. <laughs> wow, you threw me on that one. I see, when I first got that, I was like, you're gonna love this bike. And then you rode it once before, and you, I mean, it didn't really knock your socks off. So I'm surprised well, that I mean, it has, has climbed the ladder and I, defeated the rest. I rode, I rode the rest. these bikes three, four times this weekend, you know, so I've, I've tried them out. And uh, that one is, you know, it's sharp. It's a step through. It's easy for me. It's, it's definitely it is eye sharp. Catching. It's eye catching. You, I already gave you the 900. Now you're trying to steal the Komoda from me. <laughs> But Cy Rusher, I mean, they have a lot of colorful bikes, red, white, yellow. Uh, this blue is a popular color. Uh, I did not think you were gonna pick Cy Rusher. I, I thought you were gonna wanna take this one. Well, that's the, number two. The Fabulous, with the dual motors. I know you love the dual motors yeah, in there. That's number two. Number two, huh? And then, when you were talking earlier, I thought you were gonna jump to this one. The Hemingway, I really... Because you talk so much about running errands, I, I mean. I really like the Hemingway. I mean, it's so comfortable to ride, and it's not as eye-catching as the other two, um, but it is a very practical bike for me. I mean, it it does everything that, that that I would really need it to do. I don't I don't have to have that power and speed. It's just that that's kind of one of the things I look for, and I do I do like that one too. I really like a lot of these bikes. They all have something that that's unique about them that whether it's the speed of the aerial rider or the, mo the motorcycle style of, of the g-force um, yeah speed wise aerial riders got it among this crowd well and this one the amp rides too but it's it's a different animal with the mid-drive in it it is smooth but you got to be into the mid-drive motor i think to get that one aerial riders just the no-brainer speed wise really and then yeah the komoda i I like Komoda, man. That's 
it's a short bike. I got it all rigged up with all the little knickknacks, you know, the mirrors, and I put the stem riser in and the water bottle holder and everything on there. It is a comfy, just around town. It's not mind-blowing speed, but it's just when you want to go out for a fun ride, you can't beat it. Good lighting package on there. I think it's got tail light, brake light, no turn signals or anything, but and that rear rack, I can't find a pack to even fit it. It's so wide and so large. I'll have to find something to go on there. Well, maybe not because I guess it might be going on the back no, of your truck I don't, I and going home. I won't take it away from you. You can take it if you want because I can always get it back. I got enough here to keep me busy, as you can see. Wow, Komoda. <laughs> Komoda. I'm shocked at that. I'm surprised. Well, here, get in here. Oh, you want me oh, in this? Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're talking to the people here, giving them your uh, opinions on all these bikes. Anything, any final words to say on, uh, well, on any of them? I guess I have the, the benefit of being able to try all these bikes. I mean, and that, to me, that that's a benefit or a luxury that I have yeah. that most people don't have. You're, you know, most people are ordering them online and you're, mm -hmm. you're taking the word of somebody, you know, like Brian that's doing it on YouTube. Uh, um, so I am fortunate to, in being able to try them. I've probably rode, I don't know, 30 bikes or so yeah uh, probably because you've ridden years. almost every single bike i've got and, uh, so and that's why we do these videos to show you a couple different opinions on what we like and don't like about them and it's pretty hard to tell online you know, when you're just looking at them online what what to pick there's too many to pick from yeah. so you need to to figure out what you're looking for in a bike what you're going to what you're going to use it for and do you really need the speed or the power or you're just going to commute or run errands and you know and then kind of pick the bike that, that matches what your needs are and you know what that's he That's needs the Komoda. <laughs> needs the blue bike. Needs the Komoda. So Cyrush is your company, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> they make the flashy, flashy bikes that you like. Well, that's all we got for you today. So I hope you did find that helpful. Um, but again, just you got to think about what you want and buy the bike that's going to match your needs and, and what you're looking for and what you're going to do with it. So hopefully some of this information you found helpful. And uh, if you like this content, consider hitting subscribe and I'll try to have this gentleman join me as, as much as I can but he's not in town all that often so we utilize his thoughts when he is in town well Papa Sisson has traveled back home and he did take a bike with him but as you can see it was not the Cyrusher Komoda he uh, I, th I think he felt bad taking this one home because he knows it's one of my favorites to ride right now as well so it's still here he ended up taking home the EMX extreme bike from Fabulous. I think ultimately he wanted to give the, the dual motor bike a try. He lives in a, a hilly spot in Pennsylvania. Mm, a lot more hills than I've got here in North Carolina. So I think he wanted to just try out that dual motor bike and see how much of a difference that really makes. It does make a big difference. So the EMX Extreme Bike is gonna be vacationing with Papa Citizen in Pennsylvania for a while. We'll see if I get that one back from him or if he falls in love with it. I gave him the Cyrusher 900 bike a while back and I've, I've never got that one back. <laughs> That's his now. He owns that bike. It's his favorite just because it's so flashy and it's got good power. So uh, Cyrusher, he tends to like the Cyrusher bikes just because they're very colorful and they're very eye-catching bikes and you know the Komodo is just super comfortable as well. And um, he, the last time, we did this video once before where he rode about 14 bikes in one day. It was when I had a whole bunch of these 26 by four fat tire bikes, the Cyrushers and the Aventons and the Be Cools and the Hemiways and the Magicycle. And he ended up picking this as his favorite in that video. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's a very popular video. And uh, I think it was largely due to the power and the comfort of this bike. So he took that one home for a while and I, I eventually got it back because I just did a video recently doing a lot of upgrades to that one. And uh, lately, I've just I've been taking in a lot more of the 20 by four fat tire bikes, and uh, I hope you I hope you enjoyed that video and that you found it helpful. That's why we do them. I'm going to keep doing them. I've got more of these style bikes on the way, the 20 by four fat tire bikes, and by the time he's back down here for a visit, I'll probably have a whole new set of bikes for him to try. And then after that, I'm going to have to liquidate some of these bikes. It's honestly getting overwhelming. I just have far too many to ride, to store, to maintain. There's more on the way. So I'm gonna have to let some of these bikes go in the future. If you are local and you have interest in some of them, uh, just keep checking back. I'll let you know when I'm ready to let some of them go to new homes. 
And uh, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, definitely consider hitting subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.